Is the 2015 MacBook Air still good in 2022? Let's find out in this video. <laughs> What's up guys, it's Tech Raccoon back with another video and I just recently got a 2015 MacBook Air for 300 Australian dollars and I will go over the specs that I got a little bit later on in the video but I have been using it for about a week now and I'm pretty familiar with how it works and everything about it basically. So I thought I'd make a video on how it holds up in 2022 because it is getting relatively old, but thankfully it still has software updates. Let's begin with the design and build quality. The build quality and design is really, really good. The design is minimalistic and sleek and the build quality is really, really strong and it won't disappoint you. It is a MacBook. The build quality and design is basically what Macs are known for and this MacBook is no different. Now this design was used all the way up until 2017, which they released their last model of this version, and then they moved in 2018 to the more modern looking MacBook Airs. But this one is a very, very common design and probably one of the most common MacBooks out there right now. Now as for IO, this thing doesn't have a lot of IO. It has two USB 3.0 ports, type A, and then it's got an SD card slot, headphone jack, and a Thunderbolt 2 slot. And of course the MagSafe charger 2.0, which is really, really nice. But yeah, the port selection is limited considering it doesn't have USB Type-C or anything. So in 2022, that part does sort of hold it back a little bit. But for me, I actually really like the port selection. An SD card slot is something that I really like to have on a laptop, not to mention a couple of USB ports and their type A, which is what I mainly use. The only port that I would have really liked to see on this MacBook Air is a HDMI port, but honestly, I'm not disappointed at all that it doesn't have one because of the size factor of this laptop. And this laptop, of course, has the lovely backlit Apple logo, which I really like, which they did get rid of in 2018. Now let's talk about display. Now the display on this laptop is actually pretty good. It's got nice brightness, good colors, great viewing angles, all of that, just like any MacBook basically. And the resolution is a touch better than the 2012 MacBook Pro, which I have as well. So the resolution on this is 1440 by 900, compared to the 1280 by 800 on the 2012 MacBook Pro unibody. And both of them, of course, have a 13 inch display. So this is pretty familiar to me, just a little bit higher resolution, which does make it quite a lot better and not to mention the fact that it doesn't have a crack in the screen like my 2012 MacBook Pro unibody. One thing to note here is that the bezels are made out of aluminium as well. They're not glass so for some people that may be a bit of a turn off and they might not really like it. For me I actually quite like it and I don't mind at all. But the bezels are relatively thick in 2022 compared to what's coming out nowadays with really slim bezels. Now, one of the highlights of this laptop is the keyboard and trackpad. The keyboard is a typical butterfly keyboard and it works like a dream. It is just really nice to type on. I can type fast on it and it has a nice amount of travel with good feel and good spacing between the keys. And of course, it's backlit if you do need that. And in general, I am really happy with this keyboard. Not really any complaints here at all. It's a great keyboard on a laptop. As for the trackpad, the trackpad is definitely the highlight of this machine and definitely the highlight of basically all Apple laptops. The trackpad on these laptops, any Apple laptop, are phenomenal. And this one is no different. It feels really, really good. It is a bit smaller compared to the modern laptops, but still, I never feel that it needs to be bigger. It's perfect size. And this is definitely my favorite trackpad I've used on a laptop. So the keyboard and trackpad definitely hold up well in 2022. Let's talk about the specs that these laptops come in. So the 2015 model comes with an i5 clocked at 1.6 gigahertz. That's basically the most common processor you see. Then of course you have either four or eight gigabytes of RAM and you have from 128 gigabytes of storage to 512, I'm pretty sure. Mine's specced with 128 gigabytes of storage and only four gigabytes of RAM. The main reason it has such low specs is actually because I bought it off eBay and it was advertised with eight gigabytes, but it ended up only having four. But at the end of the day, I'm actually using this laptop and I've never actually felt the limit of the four gigabytes of RAM yet because I'm not really doing anything intense on this. I have tried editing a few videos on Adobe Premiere Pro, but that CPU is just not designed for that type of stuff. I mean, it just really, really struggles. And of course, that's where I did notice that the RAM was running out as well. 
But for Photoshop and stuff, and having several Chrome tabs open, and Discord, and all of that open at the same time, doing a bit of stuff, it actually works quite fine. So I'm surprised that four gigabytes of RAM on this laptop is actually perfectly usable. I'm guessing this is probably because of the Mac OS operating system is pretty well optimized. And as for the storage, the storage is actually one thing that's upgradable on this laptop. You can put another M.2 drive in there, which I do plan on doing relatively shortly. Now, if you are to pick up one of these laptops, one of the first things I'd recommend doing is actually opening it up and cleaning out the fans to make sure that it isn't running hotter than it should be with a load of dust in there. And that's what I did. And I took out a fair bit of dust and it runs a lot cooler than it was previously. Also replacing the thermal paste is something I will do pretty quick because that will definitely improve the thermals as well. And speaking of thermals, the thermals on this laptop aren't terrible, but it does love to hover around that 90 degree mark even when the cpu is running only at about 80 percent usage but the fans have a lot of rpm that they can ramp up to which is 6500 so if it ever does get too hot the fan just ramp up and you're fine but most of the time they stay really silent so yeah no worries there moving on to battery life with this laptop the battery life i've had has been pretty good this is a relatively old laptop coming from 2015 and I've easily been able to get at least four hours of usage on the battery, and it is a pretty old battery. So the battery life isn't bad, especially for its age. Now, me personally, I usually have like a charger with me anyway, so it's not really a big deal for me. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I did get mine for 300 Australian dollars, and that was meant to be the eight gigabyte version, but I only ended up getting four gigabytes of RAM. But even that is kind of like an average price for one with four gigabytes of RAM anyway. So that's not a terrible deal anyway. Now, if you do want to get an eight gigabyte of RAM one with 128 or 256 gig storage in good condition, you will be looking to spend four to 500 Australian dollars. But if you are all right with four gigabytes of RAM, then you can get them under $300 quite happily. So is this laptop good in 2022? And would I still recommend it? Well, yes, absolutely. If you're going to be doing browsing, watching YouTube, maybe sending a few emails, something that's good for typing with a really nice trackpad, really something that's good for web surfing and stuff like that. This laptop is actually really, really good. And I love how portable it is with its lightweight design and how thin it is, just everything about it feels really solid. I am really liking this laptop a lot. So I definitely think it still holds up well in 2022. And especially since you will have software updates for a couple of years still. So hopefully this video helped you out on deciding if you should still get one of these laptops in 2022. If it did, drop a like on the video. If it didn't, drop a dislike on the video. Remember to subscribe to the channel for more content like this, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.